So today's class is about making space, um, making space for the birth to come. <laughs> Maxine's having a full on contraction. <laughs> She's like, oh my God, is this the real labor yet? Oh, this is a big one. Yeah, um, so, <laughs> sorry, Maxine. So um, this, this set is really about making space to go into deeper labor, to create space in the lower back, if that's sort of holding things up a little bit. But it's also for some of our newer pregnancy moms, um, our Emmas and our Emilies, because um, it can feel really weird at the beginning of the pregnancy thinking, but I can't even see anything that's going on and yet your whole body's changing. And then you go through nausea and when we go through nausea, our body tightens up so much that now we need to release that trauma from nausea. We need to release all of the deep seated bone tiredness of early pregnancy, where you literally feel as though the tiredness is seeping out from the inner bone marrow of the body. And that never gets explained in proper words because you're creating this little life through an explosion of cells and you can't see it happening on the outside, but that matrix of, of fundamental patterning that's happening within the womb space is so profound that for a few weeks, it takes all of your energy. And that's not, so for me, taking some time off work in first trimester is probably more important than third trimester, just saying. So um, we're going to work with stretching out the body to find as much space as possible. But because so much happens around the shoulders and when you've had nausea and vomiting, the sternum area and the area underneath the ribs becomes tight and traumatized, we're going to open this breathing diaphragm first. So, hi Perry. So you're going to need your bolster and we're gonna start on the right side. Lie down over your bolster on your right side, take your blanket and then fold it up another and squeeze it into the nape of your neck. Then reach your left arm overhead and extend through the left side body. We're focusing on the ribs on the left to begin with. Just inviting a deep body opening. These passive stretches are an absolute gift for a pregnant body. So remember this sequencing when you feel as though you have anxiety, but it's not really anxiety. It's that you can't breathe, which creates anxiety because there's a loop that happens through the brain. When the brain doesn't receive enough oxygen, it becomes anxious because it's an organ that needs a lot of oxygen. And so sometimes anxiety plays off tightness in the body and then it becomes a loop. So we're releasing that loop and allowing for deep breath to move into the diaphragm. So all the attachment points of the diaphragm around the ribs, particularly on that left side right now with the arm reaching over the head, draping down slightly and a gentle upward curve of the rib basket. We're now finding the breath. So take a little bit of time to listen in and figure out what's going on. Make sure that your neck truly feels comfortable and that you feel elongated through that left side. Ashasta, where must the bolster cushion under your neck be? Must it be just under your neck or under your arm? Neck. So underneath the neck. So take take your blanket or whichever other cushion you're using and tuck it into the nape of the neck. Get it nice and strong between the shoulder and the ear so that your head drapes slightly over the cushion. And that slight downward tilt of the head also invites cerebrospinal flow. It's okay to take your time to get completely comfortable in these shapes. Because once you're here, you'll begin to feel the magic of moving into a passive shape to allow for deep opening. 
Emma, reach your arm closer to your bolster, your bottom arm. Take your bolster, your bottom arm alongside the bolster. Yes, there we go. That's it. And reach the top arm over and drop down into that right shoulder. And allow yourself to feel into the breath. Allow yourself to breathe with feeling. You savor the breath and gently begin to feel the diaphragm attachment points, all those ligamentous as well as fascial points that connect to the ribs, the sternum, the back of the ribs, the internal organs, the viscera. As you relax deeper, the diaphragm will find more space. So you're relaxing the abdomen and the belly, letting the breathing feel full, free, unrestricted, feeling the belly rise and fall with each breath and experience how this gentle, continuous movement ripples through the whole body. It can be felt everywhere. It's almost as though you're allowing the body to ride the breath, savoring the air on the inhale and the exhale. The neck and the throat and the face is completely relaxed. Relax your mouth, corners of your mouth, the lips. Particularly relax the jaw. Relax your nose, your ears, your cheeks, scalp. Everything is relaxing and just allowing this luxurious stretch to open up the intercostal muscles, feathering out the ribs. One more minute on this side. Feel the space inside your body, the space around your baby and the space around your body. And notice that as you relax, you can expand. Every tension begins to evaporate. You're allowing, that allowance gives for a sense of ease so that tension disappears. Until you simply feel wide, opening, tingling. It's just spaciousness. You're aware of what's happening. You're inviting the release of deep tension. There's a melting that happens before the expansion, a condensing with the exhale breath, melting in towards the midline, and then an expansion with your inhale breath. Three more of these condensing and expanding breaths. The spine from the middle of the spine acting like a Constantina towards the tail and the crown. That Constantina expanding and condensing. Beautiful. We're simply going to roll onto the back body now so that your ribs are, and waist is over the bolster. And then again, get your blanket comfortable underneath your head. Your sacrum is on the ground as you roll over onto your back. And you can bend your knees for most of you and make sure that your shoulders are off your cushions and draping down towards the ground. They might touch the ground, they might not. You can take your blanket roll and tuck it underneath the neck again. Get completely comfortable, take your time to find an impeccable level of comfort. The lower back might feel slightly tight, or maybe today it feels good. If it's too intense to take your arms framing your face like goalposts, place your elbows on your cushions and bring your hands over your heart. This will soften out the intensity of the stretch. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. Allow the belly to relax, allow the sacrum to relax. Please understand that if you have had any vomiting attacks, the sternum and all the tissues around the sternum are traumatized. This means that they've gone into probably some spasm that's difficult for it to release. So communicating with your body and saying it's okay to let go as you move through ripples of discomfort in this shape. You might choose to close your eyes and continue releasing tension. And there's a difference between tension and a good stretch. Knowing the difference is important. You want to begin to feel wide open like the sky. And eventually this spaciousness, I would call it conscious comfortableness. If there's such a thing, this conscious comfortableness is known as the sky of mind or pure conscious awareness where you're relaxing into yourself so that you can consciously experience your unity with infinity. All of our problems, all of the things that crowd in around us in our everyday lives, all of the intensities of reworking relationships in those first months of pregnancy, we all have to travel that path of reorganizing our primary relationships during pregnancy. Every single woman has to do this because we challenge ourselves to speak into our truth and this is uncomfortable for our partners and often for ourselves. Take some more moments here, becoming familiar with what it feels like to be open, relaxed and fearless. And at the same time, undefended, all of these oxymorons that you're holding within the space of your body. But at the base of it all, you are coming to feel a piece of stillness. If this doesn't work for you immediately, practice this regularly on a daily basis, this little series of three, sideline, backline, sideline so that your body over time will completely release. Maxine is in a place of deep, deep receptivity and openness. Her body is relaxed so much, everything is expanding. I can literally see it from here. She's ready for birth. Her cervix is probably already dilated three or four centimeters. Everything is open. Five more breaths. As you relax, you will expand. As you relax, you will expand. Our intention to move closer to that sky of mind conscious comfortableness where everything is okay. We'll gently move now over onto the left side. So just softly swing your body over to the left. You might need to place your hand on the ground, lift the waist up slightly, get everything comfortable underneath the waistline, tuck that blanket in a roll underneath the neckline and then reach your left up, right arm up and over expanding now through the right side body, side line on the left to open the right side body. Make sure your uterus is comfortable. If this means sliding something between the knees, then do so. Remember, as you relax, you will expand. And sometimes we're trying too hard in life. We keep trying and pushing and trying and pushing, which creates so much tension around the body that we've forgotten what it's like to relax. And therefore, 
we've forgotten what it's like to expand, to begin to feel big, huge, spacious, to feel as though you as awareness are infinite, infinite in the sense of the not infinite, not limited, not what you thought you were, not body only. Eventually you can't actually sense or limit or there is no stopping point to where your consciousness is. You can't feel the edges of it. You have expanded. That can only happen when you can allow your body to move into deeper and deeper states of true relaxation. And these shapes help to open up areas of tension to let them melt away so that the diaphragm can truly do its work of expansive inhale, soft, gelatinous, jellyfish-like, exhaling, condensing, releasing. Inhaling, that jellyfish rises, expands, fills the pelvic floor, fills the abdominal cavity, Exhale, wafts up right into the lungs, lifting the diaphragm, allowing all the air to move through the body. In waves of relaxing into yourself, One more minute on the side, soak it up. When we move into our more intense yoga shapes, after some deep relaxation, you're going to experience more space, less strain, less pushing, more deepening, accepting, finding, exploring. Gently press the palm into the ground and slowly, slowly begin to come on up. Once up, just take a moment on your hip, relax your shoulders, relax your arms, close your eyes. And notice if there has been any release created during that cycle. And commit to practicing it again if you find that you are holding too much tension. Coming now, now onto all fours, you can take your cushion away, but keep it close by. And you'll now need your blocks, which you'll just place to one side. And coming onto all fours, enliven the spine with a few deep breaths through cat and cow. Absorb each breath like rain falling on moist earth. Soak it in. And 
and ask yourself if you can do more work to find the space in the diaphragm, in the lamb, or if you truly are able to experience and explore full capacity, which will be a joy, it will feel amazing. You'll know, you'll know when you have been able to explore your land in their fullness. Taking you now into a downward facing dog, lift the knees, Take your feet as wide as your mat for this downward facing dog. And allow the chest to relax. Taking your feet as wide as the mat allows the hamstrings a little bit of time to get used to the downward dog. Gives more space to the hamstrings. We'll take three more deep breaths. Allow the exhale to be long and smooth. Walk your hands back towards your feet and simply fold. Feel into your hamstrings, allow the fold to be relaxed but deep. Because in a moment, you're going to explore the difference that will be made after our asymmetrical stretches. This is a therapeutic practice, which means we're slowing down enormously. Bend your knees, walk your hands up your thighs slowly. If you tend to get dizzy, stop halfway, pause, allow the blood pressure to equalize, and then make your way all the way up. Particularly for those of us that experience low blood pressure, once in Tadasan, hold, Samastiti simply means come into the stillness of the moment, be present. We're going to release the iliopsoas muscle on the left side first, and then we're going to work the hamstring on the left, and then we'll move to the right. So take your block and stand on it with your right foot. Bring your hands to your hips. If your block doesn't feel firm enough or comfortable, you can fold up a firm blanket and stand on a firm blanket instead. It's up to you, especially if you have book with a slippery cover. Hands to the hips, action the right leg slightly by engaging, and then begin to swing your left leg. Once you feel steady, you can bring the arms into it as well. So the left arm will come forward as the left leg goes back. If you feel, um, too sort of uncomfortable on your block and it's too spongy, you can definitely change to your blanket if that feels better off for you. So you choose. If you've got the cork or wooden yoga blocks, you don't have to worry too much about that. And if you're using a block book, please be mindful. Keep your breath regular. The swinging action of that left leg is simply hydrating and releasing and lengthening the psoas muscle, which runs from the mid back right the way down the sacrum, spirals into the inner thigh and completes its journey into that inner thigh. Almost there. Beautiful. We've released the left side, step down, feel. Close your eyes and notice you may feel more spaciousness on that left side. Spin your book or block around if it's the wrong way and step along the length of that block. Step your left foot onto it. So your feet are hips distance apart exactly and your left foot is on the block. Make sure that your heels are aligned, your feet aren't staggered. They're exactly opposite each other, feet parallel. Bend your knees, 
hold your other block, bend your knees, place the bar block on the ground. If you find that the ground is still too far away, take a cushion, bring the block onto the cushion. Straighten your right leg, keep your spine long, and then straighten your left leg. Now we've released the psoas muscle, so you should have more spaciousness along the spine. You should be able to experience some of these <coughs> along that left edge of the spine, excuse me. And just listen in to the hamstrings, particularly in that left side. The tendency might be to really buckle the knees if this is intense. Try and get the right leg as long as you can, and then the left to a place that feels comfortable and accessible. Three more breaths with the spine elongated. Try and keep your neck relaxed and your breath even. Walk the block over to the right hand side as far as feels okay for you. The block is still the highest level. If you need to move your cushion around as well, because you need the height, then take the cushion around and place your block on the cushion. Now your tendency once again might be to shift your weight into the right side. Try and weight equally into both heels and then press the right left hip away slightly and breathe into the left line of the body. Oh, hello body, Emma. <laughs> Your body is saying, Emma, you left me behind for a while. <laughs> hello. It's gonna have a right old conversation. Emily is also getting the conversation strong and powerful. Her body's saying, oh. Perry's body has opened up so beautifully. I remember when you did this for the first time, Perry. Walk the block back to center. Lengthen first. Emma, keep it high. Emily, you can take it a little bit lower. And now for the Stellas and the Maxines and the Iras, drop the blocks. Nikki, see how it feels for you as well. Drop the block completely and fold. Nice, relax your neck. Beautiful. So in actual fact, Emily, your hamstrings are talking to you, but they actually have a lot of space. You, your hamstrings do have a lot of space. Beautiful. Let's take another three whole breaths here. This is deep work. It's intense work. It's getting into those spaces and places, but by releasing the body first, we've given it a little bit of a chance to go into their depths. Beautiful. Asymmetrical twi twists, I mean, asymmetrical um, uh, openings are quite interesting. Now bend both knees. Emily's thinking, hallelujah. Step that left foot down. Place your hands on your thighs once again and slowly, slowly rise. Roll the shoulders down and take a moment in Tadasana to just relax. Shasta, if I can't get my, um, is it better to have my left leg straight and my right um, heel a bit off the ground? Um, so just bend the foot that's on the ground a little bit deeper if you need to. <clears throat> so bend the knees as much as you need, but keep both feet on the ground. Otherwise, it's going to distort them from the Achilles right up into the issue of tuberosity. So, so keep both knees. feet on the ground, but bend your knees as much as you need to. Okay. Right, let's release the right side. Actually. Just take one moment with both feet to the ground to take a forward fold again and just listen to the left and listen to the right. So the left, you're feeling, you feel, oh, there's openness, the space. Now let's work into that right side. So as you gently arise, you'll feel that length on the left side. You can step your left foot onto your block or onto your blanket, whichever is the more firm surface for you. Bring your hands to your hips, 
dangle your right leg first. It's interesting, it's important not to sort of swing your leg too crazy. You want to let it start to pendulum and then bring your arms into it and just let that, the weight of the leg tease out and hydrate the psoas muscles. Of course, keeping your balance means that we're, we're testing our true and natural core. And most people think that our sexy abs are our true core, they're not at all. The abdominis rectus are not, those are accessory core muscles. Um, people just like exercising them a lot so they look cool and have fat stomachs. But in actual fact, a true core that brings integrity to your midline and whole body system are the psoas muscles, which act as guide wires between the spine and the legs. So you can imagine when the guide wires are distorted, slack, or too tight, everything starts to either compress or distort and there's no stability. So what we're doing is we're allowing the guide wires of the psoas muscles to find their happy place right now, which will support the spine beautifully on the legs. Step it down. I know that left side's worked, so if it needs some blood flow, just pick up the left leg. And then feel into your right. Ah, just notice. So there's something heavenly about working with these muscles. It releases contractions of the mind. It allows for the space through the pelvis. Working with the psoas, if you are getting close to labor and you want that labor to now initiate, it can help the labor to really it can help it along. Beautiful. And then from here, let's step our right foot onto the block. Keep both heels on the ground, Emma, it was a good question. You don't want to lift one heel, so keep both heels on the, on the block and on the ground. Lengthen through the body, take your other block up to the highest level. If the ground is still far away, I see that Emma's gone and got a stool and she's using a stool. That's a brilliant, um, that's a brilliant adjustment. And definitely even using any kind of furniture that helps you lengthen slightly. Straighten your left leg first or bring it towards straight and then your right. And just hang out for a bit. If you want to experience more, of course, you'll just shift your, the weight of your hips further over the heels and back. If you want to experience less, shift the weight forward slightly and keep the knees just a little bit bent. <clears throat> So the sacroiliac joints probably have the most ligament attachments stabilizing these joints. And we can really feel into the fascial extensions from the sacroiliac joints right up the lower back, all the way to the mid back where the communication channels between the psoas and the sacroiliacs are happening. Walk your cushions and block or just block over to the left side. Again, press into the blocks and then shift the weight slightly towards the right side. Relax your neck, breathe into the right ribs. Let the ribs feather out. Again, you can always bend the knees slightly if you need to. Relax your neck. This is very helpful. By relaxing your neck, you also give permission to the body to relax a little bit deeper. You're now guiding the breath into the right lobes of the lungs. Lovely. Let's take it to our depth. So as you walk the box forward, you might choose to let the block go or drop the block level <clears throat> or stitch the blocks completely as you take it deeper. Stella making the adjustments that work for your body. I think she's going uber deep <laughs> with an interlace of the arms behind her. What can I say? But most of us that have a pee in the pod, just be a bit mindful. Nikki's got lots of space there. Oh, Nikki, did you, didn't we do this the last time that you came into a class? This is the first time I've done it again since 
your last class. I'm sure you were doing it with us the last time as well. The last class that you joined, I'm not sure. No, maybe, maybe not, maybe. Beautiful. Breathe into it, Emma, breathe into it. Your body's got you, your body's holding you. Your body knows, trust, let go of that tension. Give it some space, it's crying out for that space. It's willing to let go of some of the emotional contraction that comes with all of the intensity of first trimester. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, Emily, it's loving it, I promise you, it's loving it. And then bend both knees, step your feet off the bar, walk your hands up your thighs slowly. Lift the shoulders, <sighs> sigh it all out, Tadasana, Samba, Spiti, Center. And close the eyes to feel. And now compared to that first forward fold that you did after your downward facing dog, as you open your legs a little bit wider and fold forward, how much more space do you have? How much more space do you have? Beautiful. Apart from Maxine, whose baby is like <laughs> taking up all the space. Emma, can, uh, uh, Emma, I can definitely see that there's been some release in the lower back. So we're good. Stella can literally take her head through her legs. <laughs> and wrap her arms from the inside around the heel, Stella, and really look through for the full variation. That's it, shoulders back. Beautiful. Ooh, Ira, it made a change to your shoulders. Your shoulders have loosened, widened, broadened. Your neck is released. And I can even see also Perry's hamstrings. They always respond to this. Oh, Stella, look at that. Beautiful. And then gently begin to Arise. Once again to Tadasan Samas, did you feel so good? Step your feet wide so you can turn the long edge of the mat, rotate the feet outward slightly, and then slowly start to come down into the wide goddess. You can grip just above the knees and deepen into this shape and stay here for some moments to feel. Ah, okay, Emily, this is gonna be a good one for you for labor. I can see that your hips will enjoy it. You've got the openness that you see in the inner thighs. This will be good. Ooh, love it. Love it, Maxine's right down into the deep goddess. Mm, so good. Doesn't this feel different than the first white goddess you did, Perry? Your body is just responding daily. It's amazing. I love it. I get so emotional. We're now going to use pulsation to open up any tissues that still feel tension and trauma. Straighten the legs. Turn your feet in so that they are just 30 degrees off the line. So if I take both my blocks here, just to give an example, and they're on the parallel. My feet parallel to the blocks will be hugging, the inner edges of the feet hugging the blocks. And I'm gonna rotate out two inches. So let's say that's about four centimeters so that my feet are out 30 degrees. Grab hold of your blocks the highest level and bring the blocks forward as far as you can. Then bend your knees. I'm gonna show you the back end of this shape as well. Then bend your knees. Fluff out your tail feathers. That means that you're kind of fluffing out the butt. Push into the blocks, pull your chest forward, take a deep inhale, press the outer rims of the feet to the mat and keep the knees bent through the inhale. And then on your exhale breath, with pressure of feet to the ground, pull into the blocks, slowly bring the legs towards straight and deepen the chest. Bend the knees, pull your chest forward, hold the blocks, brace them, exhale. Press firmly into the feet, resist the sensation through the muscles and slowly peel your legs back towards straight and bow. Doesn't mean you're locking out the knees. Two more times, these pulsations. Seat deep, knees bent, pull into the blocks, open the chest, then keep pulling the blocks. 
Engage the muscles on the legs. Slowly bring them towards straight. Bow one more time. Then lift, pull into the block slightly, and then press your feet into the ground. Resist the stretch, then take it to its deepest. Flip the blocks down one level, walk them forward, keep the legs. The knees are not locked out. The muscles have engaged. You've used the fascia to get into the stretch that feels good for you, and you're now holding it. There's a slight patterning of tension because we're engaging the muscles. The fascia is stretching with the muscle. Deeply healing because the fascia becomes traumatized with our own mind. So as our mind holds trauma, so does the fascia. And as we release through the fascia, so the mind allows itself to relax and release some of the holding. Beautiful. Walk the blocks back a little. Heel toe your feet in just a little bit and come down into a wide squat. You can choose to keep holding the blocks any level, or you might choose to let go of the blocks and then bring your hands to pray. There's a depth happening, there's a lot going on in the hips. You can stretch some of the fascial tissue as well. Beautiful. Creating space, space across the pelvis. If you're finding it just too much to get into the squat to start with, you can keep the hips a little bit high, push into the blocks, and just take your time to come down. Take your time. Another three breaths. Remember, these squats will get easier and easier until they just feel good. Our bodies are a reflection of what's happening within. So listen to the body. Fingertips come to the ground, lift the hips. It's beautiful. You can place the front of your mat and just step into your downward facing dog. Deep breaths. Still working therapeutically into the fascia. You can come onto all fours and first of all, just hydrate the whole spinal system. Deep breaths, deep breaths. Go into the spine with each movement. Beautiful. Now, done correctly, this can be pretty intense, so go carefully. Maxine, listen in. You can soften out before this baby's born, but this really, really warms up the hip flexors for the pushing stage. <laughs> but I don't want you to take it too deep. Take your blocks and place them at the highest level. Step your left foot forward, tuck your right toes under, and pick your right knee up. Push your hands into the blocks on the inside of that left foot. And then spread your right toes and really press the ball of the right foot into the ground. Engage the right leg. No buckling knee. Engage the right leg. Push firmly into the box. Inhale, slowly bring the hips down. Keep that right leg engaged, super engaged. You'll feel it into the... It's not about sagging. Engage everything. And then look up. On your exhale, slowly stretch it out. Press back. Roll the right heel towards the ground. Option to bow. Bend the left knee, press up high onto the ball of the right foot, feel the toes squiggle. Keep the right leg super tight, slowly lower the hips, lift the gaze, peel it back, flexes will really take it into the back bend, and then slowly roll the right heel directly behind the toes, feel the Achilles by drawing the right heel strongly towards the ground as you bow. One more time, press up high, Slowly bring the hips down, lift the gaze, and press back. Wide pyramid. Drop the level of blocks if you wish. Try not to skew the right heel inwards. Keep it directly behind the toes so it's a straight parallel foot, parallel to the long edge of the mat, and then a little more depth, maybe on the inside of the left. 
your handshake is super open. They've done a lot of work already. So you can explore the depth here. You can really explore the Achilles opening by pressing right heel down towards the ground. Good. Bend the left knee, spin the right heel to the ground, heel to the left foot into the midline, and place your block upward behind the left shin. Place your left palm on the block and reach your right arm up to the sky. Now, if you feel that you're kind of stuck in the hip, you can slide your right arm underneath your left thigh and then pull the thigh up and straighten the right leg, left leg, and then reach your right arm high and re-bend the knee and notice how much space you have into the inner left thigh now. We'll take another two breaths in the side angle version. If you like space, spread your right fingers, bend your elbow, and then roll the shoulder back, elbow back behind you, creating space in the ribs. Beautiful. Keep that left knee deeply bent. Slide your hand underneath your left thigh again. And then roll the thigh in towards the inner left thigh with the hand strong roll. Pick the muscles that roll them in straight in the right leg, left leg, sorry, at the same time. Keep that. Take your right hand to your hip. Guide the hip upwards slightly. And reach your right arm up to the sky once again for Konasan. Wonderful shape for helping baby to align to birth canal. Beautiful. Last two breaths. If you wish to create more space, spread your right fingers, get the fascia involved, roll the shoulder out, roll the elbow back, slightly bent elbow. This will open the armpit, the ribs, right down into the inner hip. Place both hands to the ground. Softly land your right knee and then take fluid, soft, relaxed, rocking lunges. Relax the torso, big full breath, and just feel all the space you created in the joints and the muscles. Wow. Yay, Emma! And I will release. <laughs> beautiful. And then back onto all fours. Those beautiful sensual cat and cow rolls. You might choose to roll the hips out this time as well. And drop your mind into the therapy of the session. It's not your typical yoga class. It's not what we did on Monday at all. It literally is therapy for the body. And sometimes, you know, we want a little bit of cardiovascular. We want strength. We want this. Right now, we're just asking for deep levels of tension to melt away. Beautiful. Take your right foot forward. Place the blocks highest level on the inside of that right foot. Tuck your left toes under, lift the knee. Squiggle the left ball of the foot back. The heel is high, your toes are spread super wide. And then anchor into the blocks with strong arms. Through an embracing, engaged right left leg, deepen the hips. Stella, the deeper you toss your gaze back, the stronger the stretch will be into that iliopsoas. That's for Stella, not necessarily pregnancy. And then press back and bow. And again, finding your depths. It could be quite high, and that's okay. Maybe the hips feel good going deeper. Feel strongly into the inner thigh, into the quad. Be mindful and press back. Remember, the left heel moves directly behind the toes. One more pulsation, take your time. These should be luxurious stretches, and then press back. Wide 
moment, you might flip your blocks down, take a moment to focus on the Achilles on the left side. This means you're going to try and embed the left heel down towards the ground. It might touch, it might not. And then put a bit more pressure, forward pressure into the right ball of the foot. Walk the blocks a bit further away, spread yourself thin as you bow. Neck is relaxed. Three big hot breaths into the fire through the legs. Nice. Walk the blocks back slightly. We bend the left knee, right knee, spin the left heel to the ground. Heel toe the right foot to the midline of the mat. Pick your block up with your right hand, place it behind the right shin. Beautiful. Press firmly into that block and reach your left arm high. Now, if you feel as though you'd like to make more space around the thigh, into the joint, slide your left arm underneath your right thigh as you Pull firmly into the tissue, straighten the right leg for one moment, and then re-bend the knee as you reach your left arm up to the sky and hold your side angle. Is that another contraction? Is that another contraction for you, Maxine? It was like, okay, I'm just gonna collapse right here for a moment. Take it as easy as you need to, Maxine. These are quite strong movements, but your body could be delighting in them. Beautiful. Remember to find the outer rim of the left foot firmly into the ground. And then once again, we're going to assist the fascial tissues from beneath the right thigh. Take your right palm under, left palm under the right thigh till the fingers wrap around the thigh. Then as you pull into the tissues and ring towards the inner thigh, straight on the right leg, follow through with the fingers, and then reach your left arm up to the sky. And now we've got space. You might choose to guide the left hip open a little bit more. It's always helpful to use your hand for guidance if you need. The sacrum is quite broad and surprisingly square. And you're trying to find width across the clavicles. If you want to bend that elbow, spreading the fingers and rolling the ribs open, you can do so. Beautiful. So good. Bend the right knee slightly. Bring the left knee down. And then you sigh to rock the lunge, relax everything. Beautiful. All good. Come on to all fours, open the knees wide. If you want to use a cushion, you can use your cushion. Otherwise, simply bring belly down between the thighs. And child's pose as you melt your heart towards the earth. And just relax. Notice the space in the lower back. So Maxine, this will feel really amazing. All that space created in the lower back, particularly as baby is so deep in your pelvis. Beautiful. And now there's length in the spine, the space between the vertebra, the space in the lower back, the neck has released, the hamstrings are happy. I am going to invite you to come into a shape that feels good for you for your Shavasana. It could be a side lying. Um, if it's 
up to me in my own body right now, I would probably want to back bend again, a passive back bend over cushions. Or maybe you want to stack your cushions up so that you can do sort of a kanasan and have the soles of the feet together, knees open. We're beautiful, relaxed. Kanasana, where the ribs will also be beautifully wide, shoulders deepening. If on your back you just have rising nausea or any sense of dizziness, then don't do it. You can come down into your side lying. Take your time to get comfortable. And then we'll complete with that same sense of moving into releasing tension until there is very little tension left, if any. Again, as you close your eyes, breathe out into Father Sky, down into Gaia, Mother Earth, until you feel wide, open like the sky, until you feel that spaciousness, that conscious comfortableness, sky of mind, pure conscious awareness, because you are relaxing into yourself and allowing. Again, take up your space, be big, be full. Be without limits, be infinite, until it feels like a wave relaxing into itself and therefore experiencing its inherent ocean nature. That is, experiencing self as the ocean. When we move into these spaces of deep trust and relaxation, there's a whole new sense of identity that comes with that. It's not a new identity, but it's a new sense of identity. There is a different difference, my friends. We are less limited, we are more comfortable, Because within our false self-concepts, we can have no comfort. We're letting go of all concepts, like shoes that once fit but are now too small, it doesn't work. Therefore, this new sense into deeper self. All ideas about who and what we are, all tensions, self-criticisms, limited definitions. And we are now simply here for the experience. Experience yourself in a new and expanded way today in any way you can. Even if there's a lot of work to do and it's just a glimmer. Feel that experience and be in it. As pregnancy progresses, it feels good to move into that deep place of inner knowing and comfortableness. We are open and relaxed. Comfort is your natural state. Relax into it, become one with it. 
realize that you are it already. We are home, my friends. Your babies are home in your body, chosen you to be their parent. They are home too. Be here, slide into the peace. We walk in the light. We are the light. And through these children, we bear the light. Namaste, my friends. Take all the time you need. Change position when you need to. Do try and have another few minutes of relaxation. There is only love. I will see you next time.